This morning on Daybreak, jury selection begins for the trial of Nicholas Godijan. We'll bring you the latest in this case. And now that Missourians have voted to adopt Amendment 2, the next steps in the process for medical marijuana in Missouri. Plus a shakeup in President Trump's cabinet. Find out what implications that will have moving forward. We've got all that for you and much more this morning on Daybreak. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well on this Thursday. It's November 8th. I'm Joe Morano. Lauren Barnes out sick. Daniel Shedd out sick. I'm on my own. And according to Elise, I don't sound good either. I promise I'm just stuffed up. What do you think? You're going to be okay? You don't get sick ever. I usually don't, <laughs> but I don't. Something's going around. It happens just, every year, right? I'm, the whole studio. It does. I'm just addressing it right away. We'll just get it out of the way. It'll be okay. I'm feeling fine. Just a little stuffy. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, also not as cold as it's going to be later on this week and weekend, as we keep alluding to right now. Not too bad as I walked out the door. Not too bad right now. We do have cloud cover. The radar is showing some showers, both rain and snow, but we've got dry air in the lower levels of the atmosphere. So a lot of this probably isn't making it to the ground, have not seen any ground reports, but we do have thick cloud cover out there this morning. And here's those dew points. They're very dry. So I think anything that maybe is sprinkling up up in the atmosphere is disintegrating before it gets to us. 40 degrees right now in Springfield, 36 in the Lake of the Ozarks, 34 in Rawa, and 41 in West Plains. So we've got dry roads out there this morning, uh, just some cloud cover. Then we'll have the showers come through by the evening commute. Could even be some snowflakes up in central Missouri uh, by later on today. So we're looking at increase in cloud cover, 44 degrees by dismissal with that chilly rain arriving. Then the next big story is going to be a freeze watch Saturday morning as we drop into the upper teens and lower 20s. I do think our record in Springfield could be in jeopardy. Details on how cold it gets, that's in 10 minutes. We'd like to begin with some breaking news this morning. CBS News is reporting that at least 11 people have been shot in the California town of Thousand Oaks. The Ventura County Sheriff's Department says there are multiple fatalities and the shooter is dead. Now, this happened around 11.30 local time, and deputies responded to the call at that bar that happened there. According to the bar's website, a college country night was being held at the time of the shooting. Police say they believe preliminary there may have been more than 100 people inside when that occurred. We'll continue to follow this story and bring you that news as the morning continues. You're right to know this morning, jury selection begins today for the man charged with killing the mother of Gypsy Blanchard back in June of 2015. Yesterday, Nicholas Godijan was in court for a hearing to determine what will and will not be presented during the trial on this coming Tuesday. Godijan's defense will be that because of his autism, he had a diminished mental capacity at the time of the crime and was not able to deliberate before committing it. It's a defense that he wants a mental health expert to testify to during the trial, but Prosecutor Dan Patterson argues that is for the jury to decide. Today, the attorneys will go through 80 jurors with the goal of narrowing that down to 12 by tomorrow. The trial does begin on Tuesday, and Goto John tells us that he won't be taking the stand, but that he might if there's a sentencing phase. Moving to a developing story now. This past Tuesday, voters made the decision to legalize medical marijuana in Missouri by passing Amendment 2, so up next comes implementation. Chip Shepard with New Approach Missouri says things now shift to the Department of Health. Patients will have to be certified with a qualifying condition, and they will then send those reports to the health department who will issue patient cards. Shepard says there are deadlines the health department will aim to hit for patient access by late next year. It's going to be highly regulated by the Department of Health. Under our constitutional amendment, it's mandated deadlines for the Department of Health. So the Department of Health has to hit certain marks. Um, and if they hit all those marks, then we'll have medicine by next Christmas or next January. So we're 13, 14, 15 months away. This story has all of the details that you need to know on OzarksFirst.com, a breakdown of those deadlines and information on applications for patients and facilities. A proposition to raise the hourly minimum wage in Missouri from $7.85 to $12 past Tuesday night with more than 60% of the vote. The change is not immediate. Instead, it will be phased in over five years. According to the Springfield News leader, in 2019, the hourly minimum wage will move up to $8.60. Then in 2020, it will increase $0.85 cents every year until it hits $12 an hour in 2023. The increase to hourly minimum wages will take effect on January 1st of each year. 
Moving around the Ozarks, there's been at least 59 reports of punctured flat tires in Monette since the first of the month, and this is only November 8th. The Monette Police Department says reports started coming in the morning after Halloween. Over the weekend, a staggering 23 cars were reported to have damage to their tires on Saturday, and another 30 on Sunday. The slashed tires are happening in several locations across town, but through tips and surveillance cameras, Officers have identified three adults and four juvenile suspects. No names have been released, but we know they drove in a white pickup truck with Texas license plates during the crimes. Formal charges are still pending. Estimated damage from all three days is more than $10,000. If you are a victim of that crime spree, you're asked to report it to police. Some news from around the region this morning in Arkansas. A mountain home man is accused of making threats to CNN headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. Police say 39-year-old Benjamin Matthews harassed and threatened the life of a CNN staff in more than 40 calls. Officers also discovered Matthews has made other calls to various public officials and organizations. He was taken to the Baxter County Detention Center and is scheduled to go before a judge tomorrow. We move to some political coverage now. Jeff Sessions is out as attorney general. He gave his resignation at the request of President Trump yesterday. Democrats are now concerned his replacement could mean the end of the Russia investigation. CBS's Tom Hansen explains. President Trump forced Jeff Sessions to resign yesterday, but the ousted attorney general was all smiles as he left the Justice Department. The White House released a letter from Sessions, who told the president, quote, at your request, I am submitting my resignation. I'm disappointed in the attorney general for numerous reasons. Sessions' departure was not unexpected. Therefore, I have recused myself uh, in the matters uh, that deal with the Trump campaign. He faced heavy criticism by President Trump since recusing himself from special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation last March. The president announced Sessions chief of staff Matt Whitaker will serve as acting attorney general. A DOJ official says he'll oversee all department matters. This is another step in the president seeking to undermine and sabotage the Mueller investigation. Whitaker has been critical of the Russia probe in the past and has written it could become a political fishing expedition. Democrats called on Whitaker to recuse himself. They should not be able to end it. They should not be able to limit it. They should not be able to interfere with uh, Mueller going forward and doing what he thinks is the right thing. Mueller has indicted 35 people and companies, including some of the president's top campaign officials. Tom Hansen, CBS News. Whitaker is not expected to be named permanent attorney general by the president. Among the front runners are retiring attorney general Pam Bondi and Chris Kobach, who just lost a bid for Kansas governor. Still ahead for you guys, find out which online giant wants to follow in Amazon's footsteps with a bigger presence in New York City. Stay with us. From Color 10 Ozarks First, Lauren Barnes, Joe Morano, and weather with meteorologist Elisa Rafa. This is Color 10 News Daybreak.